Hi everyone and welcome back to Cooking with the First Ladies. My name is Liz Eberlein and I am the Education Programs Manager at the National Women's History Museum. And we are continuing to cook our way through the First Ladies Cookbook. And today we're featuring a recipe from Abigail Adams. Our theme for this week is revolutionary and Abigail Adams really embodies this theme. Not only was she the second First Lady of the United States from 1797 to 1801, she was the wife of John Adams, who was one of the founding fathers of the United States. She was a women's rights leader, a pioneer in the path to women in education, independence, and women's rights. And she insisted that a woman's role carried an equal amount of importance and responsibility to a man's. One of the most famous quotes attributed to her was from a letter that she wrote to her husband as Congress was drafting the Constitution, imploring him to remember the ladies and that women also needed to be given the right to independence. So in this way, she was a pretty revolutionary thinker. The recipe that we're making tonight is Indian pudding, which John Adams noted in his diary was often served to guests as a first course. The history behind Indian pudding dates back to early colonists who brought with them a fondness for British hasty pudding, which was a dish um, that was made by boiling wheat flour in water or milk until it thickened into a porridge. Um, and since wheat flour was scarce in the New World, settlers adapted by using native cornmeal, dubbed Indian flour, thus Indian pudding, because we use cornmeal. Um, and flavoring, um, the flavoring of this resulted in either a sweet um, made with maple syrup or molasses, or savory with drippings or salted meat. Um, don't worry, we are not making the savory version of this tonight. We are making the sweet version. It's more of a custard type pudding, um, so it is really delicious. Um, and it's made with molasses and all other sorts of really warm spices, so it should be a really wonderful kind of dessert um, to have. Um, the recipe in the book is intended for a slow cooker, but I don't have a slow cooker. So I'll be making this in the oven. And since I don't think they had slow cookers in the 18th century, I think Abigail would approve. Um, so the ingredients that we have for tonight, most of them you should already have in your pantry. There might be an ingredient or two that you don't. Um, the first ingredient, we have four cups of whole milk. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that if you don't have whole milk and you only have skim milk, run out and buy whole milk because it's really gonna make a difference in your dish. Um, it, that fat content between the whole milk and the skim milk is really going to bring a little bit more flavor to, to the dish. So please use whole milk. So that's four cups of whole milk. Um, I have half a cup of molasses. Um, and if you don't have molasses, I know not everybody keeps molasses in their pantry, don't worry. If you don't have molasses, there are other things that you can use um, in its place. Uh, one of the things that you can use if you're using, um, it's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you, the recipe calls for one cup of molasses, you can use one cup of honey, you can use one cup of maple syrup, um, you could use three quarters cup of um, brown sugar to one cup of molasses. Um, because brown sugar has molasses in it already, that's probably going to be your best bet if you have brown sugar in your pantry but you don't have molasses, that's gonna get you the closest to the flavor that you're looking for. Um, in any case, if you're having to substitute an ingredient out, um, you probably need to put a little bit more spice into your, into your dish. Um, to kind of make up for those flavors that are missing from the ingredient that you are replacing. Um, so we have um, half cup of molasses. Um, my little trick with molasses and also with maple syrup, which we also have a quarter cup of maple syrup here, is they're really thick and kind of um, sticky and syrupy um, ingredients, and they can be kind of hard to get out of a measuring, um, whether it's a measuring spoon or if it's a measuring cup, it can be kind of tricky to get all of that out. So what I do is I spray a little bit of just cooking spray in there um, before I pour it in and it makes it so much easier to get that um, to come out really, really easily so that you're not leaving behind all of those ingredients. Um, so I also have a half cup of cornmeal. I have yellow cornmeal here. Um, I have um, just a pinch of nutmeg. Um, the recipe in the book calls for fresh grated nutmeg. Not everybody is going to have fresh nutmeg in their pantry. Um, you 
can very rarely find it if you go into just a regular grocery store you're not going to come across fresh nutmeg that often um, an okay substitute is just using ground nutmeg which you probably have um, already in your spice rack so i have just a pinch of nutmeg i have half a teaspoon of uh, ground ginger um, and half a teaspoon of cinnamon i have two teaspoons of sugar i have one teaspoon of salt um, and I have two eggs. Um, and what I've already gone ahead and done is I have um, just beat those eggs so that it's, it, it just kind of break up those yolks. Um, and so that's what you're gonna wanna do just in a separate bowl. And I also have two tablespoons of butter. Um, so these, this is the cast of characters. I'm also going to add just a little bit of vanilla extract. I know the recipe doesn't call for it. Again, I think Abigail would forgive me. Um, I'm just gonna add a little a vanilla, a vanilla extract um, to kind of deepen that flavor a little bit. So these are all of the ingredients that we are going to be using today. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the stove um, and I am going to um, just turn the stove on here. I'm using a, um, a heavy pan on the stove. I'm over medium heat. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour my two cups, uh, or I'm sorry, my four cups of whole milk into that pan. Um, and I'm going to just heat it up until it's nice and hot. You don't want it to be too hot um, as you're heating it up. And then I'm going to mix my cornmeal into the milk and I'm going to let that kind of get to a little bit of a um, kind of a porridge consistency that'll take about 10 minutes. Um, so I have the, the milk heating now. I'm going to, when that heats up, I'm going to um, dump the cornmeal in um, and we will start adding the, the rest of the, the ingredients from there. Okay, so my milk has been heating. Um, it's nice and hot. I didn't want to bring it to a boil. Um, and I went ahead and I put in my cornmeal and I'm just whisking the cornmeal um, until it was nice incorporated. Um, and then I just turned the heat down to low we're gonna let this simmer um, for about 10 minutes. You don't have to constantly stir it for 10 minutes. Um, in fact, I encourage you not to because you're probably gonna be pretty tired um, by the end of it. Um, but just every, I would say every two minutes, just come over, give it a stir, set your timer for 10 minutes so that you know exactly how long it's been. Um, and this should thicken up pretty nicely over the course of the next 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Um, the milk has been cooking with the cornmeal. Um, it's starting to thicken up really nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add all of the ingredients. So I'm going to add all of the butter. I'm going to add the molasses. Two. Make sure you get all of that molasses in there. And I'm going to add the maple syrup, whoops. No, sometimes when you're thinking about too many things at the same time, you wind up making a mess. And then I'm going to add in the salt, the sugar, and then the cinnamon, the ginger, and that nutmeg. And then I told you that I was going to add in a little vanilla extract. So I'm going to do like half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm going to go ahead and just put right in there. And this is starting to smell really good. It's got all of these really warm spices like you have at Thanksgiving. Um, so you can smell that cinnamon that's in there. You can smell the molasses smells really really good so what i'm going to do is um, we are going to temper the eggs now now um, something if you remember from the last recipe that we did i mentioned something about if your liquid is too hot when you add eggs in it has a tendency to kind of scramble those eggs well we don't want to scramble the eggs so i'm going to do something called tempering which is adding a little bit of the hot liquid to the eggs and stirring so that it comes up to the same temperature. And you gotta keep stirring. The one thing that you don't wanna do is to stop stirring because this is gonna help um, the heat kind of distribute through. 
um, and this is helping the eggs come up to the kind of the same temperature as this liquid so that when you put the eggs into um, your pudding mixture, um, it doesn't scramble those eggs. Okay, so I'm going to add the eggs in. I'm just going to keep stirring, 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 stirring. And then I have my casserole dish right here. Um, I've sprayed it with baking spray. Um, you can use butter. If you, um, if you want to, you can soften a little bit of butter and just rub it around the insides. Um, that helps the mixture that you're putting into it keep from sticking um, when it comes back out. That way you don't have as much cleanup. And then I'm just going to pour all of this. Okay, so I've had my oven heating up um, for the last little bit. Um, and I have the oven at 325 degrees. We're going to go ahead and we are going to put this into the oven at 325 degrees. It's going to take a little while. This is a lot of, um, a lot of pudding um, that needs to cook. Um, so it's going to take probably about an hour and a half. Um, I would suggest when you put it in, checking it about halfway through and just kind of rotating it. Um, sometimes oven the hot spots in the oven aren't exactly in the same place, so if you rotate it means that everything kind of heats up equally. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this into the oven, I'm going to set the timer, and then I will see you when we pull this out. So I have pulled the pudding out of the oven. It was in there for about an hour and a half. You'll know um, that it's ready. Um, it has a little bit of jiggle still in the middle, but the outside is pretty firm. It's okay if it's still a little bit wobbly in the middle, it's a pudding. Every recipe that I have found in the 1700s, it says people usually ate this with some sort of cream. Um, so the closest thing that I could think of to that is vanilla ice cream. So I'm going to serve this with a little bit of vanilla ice cream. Let's see how it tastes. So I tried it and it has kind of a texture, like a pumpkin pie texture, kind of that, that mushy custardy texture of a pumpkin pie. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that this is my favorite thing. I think it's good. It has kind of like that sweetness from the molasses and the maple, sh the maple syrup. And I do like the spices in it. Um, so I think this would probably be a good alternative for um, a dessert for Thanksgiving. Um, but I do have to say that for a recipe that was developed in the 1700s, it's not bad. Um, so do with that what you will. So I'm having a blast doing this with you, going through this cookbook and making all of these recipes. I hope you're having as much fun watching um, as, as I am actually making these. Um, if you're interested in these recipes, if you do want to give these a try at home on your own, please go to womenshistory.org, our NWHM at home page. Um, every day while we are at home, we are posting new content during the week. Um, so you can find that the recipe for this and other recipes that we'll be posting over the next few weeks on our website. Um, you can also purchase our cookbook on our NWHM, um, on our womenshistory.org website. Um, so if you also want to go through and cook your way through the First Lady's Cookbook, um, please, please purchase the cookbook. Um, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can see what we have coming up that is new and exciting, especially, again, as we're all at home and we're looking for things to do with kids and just an escape for a little while. Um, we, we do have new content that's being posted every day during the week. So thank you again so much for being with me. I hope you're having as much fun as I am, um, and we hope to see you soon for the next recipe. Thank you all. Good night.